so today it's a very interesting topic and i think for uh, we have this session for orthopedic surgeons as well as for our uh, general surgery residents also so you know uh, why this topic is important because distal femur is the most common site of tumor development you look at any tumors sarcomas so this is the most common site so we should know what and why uh, we are dealing with this topic just a second so as we know majority of the bone tumors bone sarcomas this occurs in distal femur and at this site the functional outcomes are also very good there are certain uh, functional outcomes which are associated especially at distal femur uh, which is much uh, technically speaking uh, which affects our outcomes uh, it is an advantage over proximal tibia like when we resect a tumor in distal femur uh, our extensor apparatus is intact now there are different types of implants we all know uh, being orthopedic surgeons there are constrained implants modular implants so we are going to discuss about all those things today so if i have to talk about the learning objectives which we are going to gain from today's topic so one we will understand the anatomy better i know you we all have been reading anatomy books but you know when it comes to surgery things are very different from what you read in the books though you may have read so many books about anatomy but once you take a knife and you cut it you are not able to many times identify what it is exactly so this all comes with experience once you are experience you know uh, what you are dealing with which anatomical structure you are exposing which fascia you are cutting gradually and gradually you learn about it so this is a very good platform on surgical videos where we can show you how to go about it very basic point about uh, surgical planning so uh, how to plan for tumor uh, excision and which approach where to do the biopsy and i'll keep it interactive like always don't think it's going to be spoon feeding session i'll keep asking you and accordingly we'll proceed limb salvage technique and then the surgical video demonstration of how we are going to go about it so guys let us talk about distal femur anatomy so as such you see this is our femur your knee your proximal tibia now what are the important structures which constitutes which we have to think about so guys i need a volunteer come on around the knee joint tell me the stabilizing structures in a knee kya kya hote hain kon kon hai mere ko dekhna padega ek bar who all are there come on guys just your i need volunteer uh sir ha uh, yes who, who is speaking your good name uh, rakesh rakesh good evening, come on sir. rakesh evening. tell me so what sir, are the uh, structures there uh medial collateral ligaments and lateral collateral uh, anterior extensor apparatus patellar tendon and scl and pcl very good so let me draw this diagram again this is the sagittal view assume it to be friends sagittal view now let us see the when i talk about applied anatomy few things like when i when i say distal femur excision so i mean basically where we resect the joint completely and then reconstruct it that is my plan is so before before i go into that like i said we will discuss some basic anatomical landmarks and things so like very correctly said so you have as a stabilizing structure first is your bone you have like distal femur what constitutes the articulating surface of distal femur and proximal tibia these are two bones you have fibula also here that does not articulate with the femur that's proximal tibia fibular joint now you have two very important 
structure. What are these? And PCL. And PCL. So the ACL somewhere is attached like this, whereas PCL will attach like this. ACL, PCL. Then you have two strong ligaments which supports it, the MCL, LCL, medial collateral, lateral collateral. And then there will be joint capsule which which will be completely covering your joints. Now then you have your muscle layers which are there. So if you see there is patella, now the ligamentum patelli and then different group of muscles are there. So this is broad overview. So these are the stabilizing structures around the knee. Now coming to very important part about the muscular layer, when we see, uh, what do you see this, this tendon is there, right? So which structures are attached to it, this, this tendon, which group of muscles? Hamstring. 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 Quadriceps. Not quadriceps. 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 Guys. Quadriceps. Which muscles constitute quadriceps? See, this is very quadriceps. basic. And, you know, it is all about basics only. We are not talking very high funda. And I am not going to bug you off with uh, origin and insertion. I want clinical anatomy, applied anatomy, which you learned. Right? Quadriceps muscles. Which are the muscles which you will see? Vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, rectus femoris. Vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, rectus femoris, and? Vastus intermedius. Very good. So, ye batao, ki where is all attachments you see? This is now clinically. Let us let us go by common sense. Medialis means where? Where it should be? It's on the superior pole of patella. Medial. Okay. Superior pole of patella. But overall, what I'm trying to find out is the location. So you will see medialis will be somewhere here, right? On the medial aspect. Where will your intermedius? So intermedius is the innermost layer, which is like just over the bone. And then you have like this somewhere here. On top of it, your rectus is the main, the strongest one, which is anteriorly, probably this one, rectus in the center. And then your lateralis, vastus lateralis will be somewhere here. So theoretically, I have explained you, you are also very clear, yeah. But once you put your knife and you go through the skin, it is not easy to identify because they all they all merge together. They merge and then they form the common tendon. If this is your patella, then all these muscles, so say this is the rectus here, and then you have uh, vastus medialis here, which is merging, and then you have vastus lateralis on the lateral aspects which is merging and then you may have behind this over the bone will be your intermediates you won't be able to differentiate which is which one but knowing the anatomy and once you uh, have operated enough cases you will be able to differentiate the fibers by their directions and once the fibers are released how they make their planes so this is something about the bony anatomy and the muscular anatomy. Next, what is the critical structure when you are planning a surgery? What structures will you face when you have to dissect a tumor? Neurovascular bundle. Fantastic. So tell me what is the relationship of the neurovascular bundle? Let's start from the top. So either se tumara pelvis. So if this is your pelvis, what comes? Interior are uh, femoral now, femoral vessels. So, either tomorrow you will have like common iliac, it bifurcates into internal iliac and external iliac. 
So we start from the pelvis. Now your internal alia gives different branches to different visceral organs inside the pelvis. The external alia continues down and somewhere below the inguinal ligament, it forms the what? Femur. Femur. It comes like this. So your external iliac divides into superficial femoral artery and the deep 